Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. All right, and welcome to this video. This is uh, graphing functions, parabolas, and it's the first video in the series. A parabola basically is this kind of shape. It's a U shape, and I'll just kind of sketch it out here. Um, and you'll see a typical parabola equation, a function that results in a parabola looking like this. This is called a func parent function. And notice how it's a degree of 2, okay? The variable x usually is to 2. Now, there might be other things involved here as it gets a mo little more complicated, but you'll see that 2 exponent. It's a second degree function. So all of these that we're going to be looking at in these two videos in this series have to do with parabolas, a U-shape. Sometimes it's like this. Sometimes it might actually shift over to the right or to the left. Sometimes it goes down depending on um, what the function looks like, and sometimes it even might invert and flip over. Okay, that's what we're going to look at here. Take a look. So the parent function, y equals x squared, is a second degree, and it results in a parabola u-shape. Let's go ahead and plot the points and see what it looks like. If x is negative 3, then we square that, it would be positive 9. If you have x is negative 2, then you square that, and that would be a positive 4. That squared would be 1, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. Notice how we never have a negative, at least in this function. So let's go ahead and plot these points. The ordered pairs look like this. And the graph is going to look like this. Now I missed a little bit here at this lowest point. But that, by the way, is called the vertex, and that's supposed to be at 0, 0. Kind of tough to hand draw, but you can use a graphing calculator too. Notice how as x gets larger in a positive direction, y really increases quickly, because, of course, we're squaring those values. And as we go back on the x-axis to negative values going forever, again, it becomes a positive y value going forever. So it's a very symmetrical U shape. And at this point, we have no negative y values. Now let's go ahead and make an adjustment. And let's say that we have the same function, but we're going to add 2 to it. Let's see what happens to the u-shaped parabola. Now if we're going to square the x value and then add 2 to it, then we're going to have some new values. And I'm just going to kind of keep to a green color here. We're going to add 2 to all of these. So this would be 11. This would be 6. This would be 3. This would be 2. This would be 3 again, and 6 again, and 11 again. All right, let's see what happened with our ordered pairs. The ordered pairs would look like this, and the graph would look like this. Notice how we just shifted up two units. Okay, so when we add a 2, it looks like we're going to go up 2. Now, can we make a prediction about this next one? y equals x squared minus 3. So we're going to take the blue parent function and we're going to subtract 3 from each of those values. So again, and we won't have to keep coming back to this x, y chart, but let's just kind of uh, figure out what happens to a few points and everything is going to shift. So we're going to take the squared value of 9, take away 3 it would be 6. Take away 3 from the 4, that would be 1. 3 from that is negative 2, negative 3, negative 2 again, positive 1, and positive 6. So we do have negative values here because everything shifted down. So we take the vertex at 0, 0, and we're going to shift it down 1, 2, 3. Therefore, all the points in the blue function shift down 3. The ordered pairs in purple look like this. And the function graph looks like this. All right, so obviously when we subtract 3, it's a downward shift. So adding a number shifts the parabola up. Subtracting a number shifts it down. Now let's look at some other variations of this parent function. So the blue parent function looks like that, typical U parabola shape. But what if we manipulate it so that 
In this case, maybe multiply everything by 2. Put a 2 in front of the x squared. Let's see what happens. So we know that we're going to square that and get 9, and then multiply that by 2 and it jumps up to 18. This square to be 4 times 2 would be 8. Square that times 2 would be 2. 0 squared is 0. Double it is still 0, and so on. So obviously we know it's a very symmetrical function, and in this case they're all positive. And let's see what effect that has on our graph. So negative 3, positive 18, that's going to jump way up here off of the graph. Can't quite fit that on. Let's go to negative 2, positive 8. And 0, 0, same vertex. So there's no shifting going on, it looks like. Positive 1 is positive 2. And 2 goes up to 8 again. And then positive 3 goes way up to 18. All right, so it looks like our new graph is going to be kind of pinched in a little bit with the same vertex. And basically, there's a bending that happens. Okay, it's a narrower U shape. Let's look at our next one. So, what if we put a negative in front, negative 3x squared? Okay, let's look at our new x and y values. Well, we'll keep the same x values, and we're going to take our squared values and multiply by a negative 3. Let's see what happens. So, you can see that the, uh, the y values are becoming negative very quickly and it's a symmetrical um, parabola shape and it looks like it's inverted so here's the ordered pairs and as we draw this out we share the same zero zero vertex and it's going to be flipped down so getting negative very quickly on the y-axis doesn't take long to get out of the graph range here all right so let's see what happened here if we multiply by a negative in front it flips over it's in an inverted parabola if it's positive then it opens up like the parent function. Um, the bigger the number, the more pinched it is. So take a look at the gray versus the orange. You notice it's a little hard to tell. Notice that the orange is pinched in a little bit closer. So as this number gets bigger, we are going to pinch in closer. All right, one more example. y equals 1 fourth x squared. So we're going to shrink down this multiplier number, this constant it's being multiplied in front of the x squared and see what happens. Do you have any guesses? All right, if you're doing this on paper, go ahead and um, sketch out what you think the graph looks like and check back with me. So the ordered pairs would look like this, and the graph, uh, a little bit easier to draw actually, um, is going to follow this path. All right, notice how it's not quite so narrow, and whoops. So we have a flattening out effect. So the smaller the multiplier number on the outside, the flatter it is. Okay, the larger the number, the more narrow it is. It's a more narrowing effect. All right, and one last look. I want you to um, try something and then go ahead and make a comment to this video and see if you can describe what that parabola would look like. So if I give you this um, second degree function, and y equals 3x squared minus 4. Based on what we've looked at so far, try to make a prediction. What does that 3 do on the outside there and the effect of subtracting 4? All right, take care. I'm glad you were watching this video. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.